Welcome back to Sunless Sea. My medium term goal at the moment is to go up to Con Shadow, sell my my captivating treasure, go around to Ace Devel and gather some supplies and basically just kind of do a bunch of stuff up here and then make my way back to London. However, in the short term, since I found that I can resupply at Adam's Way fairly cheaply, I think I'm just going to continue to explore down south. So let's just go. My hold is completely full of stuff, I believe. Yep, 40 out of 40. 7 supplies, 26 fuel. Looking pretty good. Let's go. I hope I can find that place that will continue the main quest. The one with my father's bones, because it's supposed to be either in the south or in the central Untersea. My terror is actually not doing too bad out here. I guess being close to land is a good thing. A Varchos. Ooh, that is very south. Fungus. Glowy fungus. Oh, this place is huge. And strange looking. The mirrored city where light was always the law. The walled city of... Varchus is a tangle of green vines and luminescent fungal flowers, slow blooming around moldering stone. A quincunxt? What the heck is that? Of carved stepped towers rise over the walls and pour burning white light into the bleak sky. A rough shadowed path leads from the docks to the mirrored gates of Varchus. Two towering carved stone lamps throw their light on the angled mirrors, and a blue cloaked guard stands in the reflected pool of light. The city is a beacon against the tree-hushed, sprawling darkness of the Elder Continent. In the far distance, a vast mountain glimmers. A beacon against the sprawling darkness of the Elder Continent. So this is the Elder Continent, huh? Down south, I guess? Hmm. The place where my, uh... What was her name? The place where her, her soul is, is burning? The Brisk Campaigner? My other surgeon. Hmm. <laughs> I can choke on the smell. Uh, no thanks, I don't feel like choking today. Let's get a port report. Tone down the details of the light and its brilliance. You don't want to inspire envy in the Admiralty staff. Hmm. Sure, let's choke on the smell. It is overpowering, sweet. It comes from the fungus growing wild all over the city's stones. The flowers have white waxy leaves, which leave powdery traces on your fingers. The light coming from the city has the same camphorous quality. And the smell... Perfume worn too many days on the body. Unread books left to turn to ink-stained pulp. A garden drowned in rotting in still water. Ugh. The sailors wave you over. They're sitting on some upturned crates on the docks, playing a game with mirrored chips and stylized snakes made of bone. 
You're not thinking of going in there. The sailors gawk at you in an unconcealed horror. They take turns telling you gruesome stories of Varkas, which they no doubt invented whole cloth. Some are convinced that the Varkas eye renders sailors into tallow to light their city. Others say they steal shadows and sell them to their masters. All of them are convinced that they blind any stranger who dare to gaze too long upon their city's secrets. We're just waiting to be paid, and then we're off, one of the sailors says, nervously fingering a mirror chip. I've only got one eye left, and I'd like to keep it. Hmm. Let's ask the guard a few questions. Never a bad idea to gather a little intelligence before heading into unknown waters. Or cities, as the case may be. The blue-cloaked guard only acknowledges your existence when you step out of the darkness of the path and into the light from the lamps. The guard stands in the middle of a pool of light, looking warily at the darkness beyond you. Up close, the guard's blue cloak is, blue cloak is threadbare and mossy along the hem. A pattern of embroidered suns runs along the collar, but the gold thread is dull. The coal around her eyes is smudged. Well, Tomas, she asks, are you going to ask your questions? Or are you just going to stare? Her tone is brusque, but her expression is curiously eager. You do not think Varchus receives many visitors. I don't know if it's actually pronounced Varchus or Varchus or... I don't know, there's a bunch of different ways you could pronounce it. Varchus, Varchus. I'm gonna go with Varchus, it's fine. Yeah, why did you call me Tomas? Is that... Maybe that's a local term for, like, visitor or foreigner? Let's not correct her, it's fine, I don't care what you call me. Let's ask about the light. It all seems a bit wasteful, possibly even ostentatious. We must always walk in... Myher's? Myher's? I'm going to say Myher. In Myher's light, so we burn our lamps night and day to banish darkness from the mirrored city, she tells you proudly. If we let darkness corrupt us, we would not be Varkasai any longer, but Tomas, like you. Ah, so Tomas is, I, I guess, not necessarily a foreigner, but somebody who does not walk in the light. If you will. You wonder, is that so terrible a fate? Her mocking laugh answers you even before her words do. Yes, it would be terrible indeed, Tomas. And before you ask, she adds, No, I do not have any desire to leave Varchus. The rest of Neath has fallen from Myher's grace, and I have no wish to join them. Fair enough. What about your job? Do you like it? It is a great honor to guard the mirrored gates. She snaps defensively. She gestures to the edge of the pool of light, illuminating her post. It is very dangerous. Even a small stumble and I could fall into the dark. Her voice goes thready. I would be banished from Meyer's grace. I would lose my name. That is why they only send the bravest outside the walls. If she stepped into the darkness for even a second, that would happen? Really? Okay, if you say so. Tell me about the city's customs. Best to know before you flout them. Easier to plan an escape route, that way. Don't touch the mirrors. Don't even look into the mirrors, she says, her voice hard. And try very hard not to dream. Were you expecting something along the lines of don't murder anyone or only rare red on special occasions? Still, you nod and smile. Okay, don't dream, don't touch mirrors, don't look into them. Gotcha. No more questions? You are satisfied. Or perhaps the guard's voice is beginning to grate a little. She looks a little disappointed but does not try to engage you further. Well, let's tell the guard I wish to enter. She makes a mark in her ledger before ringing a brass bell. The mirrors of the gates rearrange to give you space to pass, but never once allow Shadow to touch the guard. Our ways are not yours, Tomas. Remember that. 
and walk in the light of Meyer. Inside the city walls, your eyes are blinded by the brilliance of the light. The verdant rot smell is even thicker. The heat of so much flame and reflected light presses oppressively against your skin. Your head pounds. It is a few minutes before your eyes adjust, and you can look around. Brass lamps and gilded sconces hang from every wall, and phosphorescent fungus grows moss-like upon doorways and ceilings. Cunningly arranged mirrors catch every droplet of light and diffuse it till each cobblestone and rampart of the city is drenched and blazing and utterly without shadow. Who do you speak to? Hmm. Bunch of different things I could do here. Let's talk to the firekeeper. Dressed all in saffron, a pair of thick fireproof gloves dangle from a silver chain at her waist. It's too important to play guide to you, Damas, she tells you before you even open your mouth. I'm the keeper of the Western Principal Mirror. She points up at the enormous multi-faced mirrors set atop each of the city's five towers. I'm only here because I'm looking for my idiot brother. He's probably busy pouring wine down some pretty dark-eyed boy's throat in the tavern. Is it a matter of great urgency, you wonder? He's late for his lamp checks in the, sa in the sacred district, is her terse reply, as she hurries away. If the Agna Hotri, Agna Hotri found out, he'd be lucky to end up in a lake dredger. Or to end up a lake dredger. That'd be a bad job. There's a lot of very strange and hard to pronounce names here. Agna Hotri, Myher. The first tower bell has sounded. Hmm. Man, I've got so many memories of distant shores. 29. Yeah, so I can only do this stuff if the nils of the towers are no more than four, and currently they're one, so I guess I just can't do these too many times. Well, these even require something awaits me in port, so I can actually only do one of these. Hmm. The Jewel Turbaned Youth. He's winking at you. That... Wait, that it a furtive wink or a flirtatious one? Only one way to find out. He looks utterly overjoyed to make your acquaintance, the bangles on his wrist flashing as he presses his hands together in greeting. My friends and I would be honored if you would attend a small gathering with us, Tomas. We are so eager to hear about the world outside Varchus's city walls. It seems an innocuous enough invitation. But then why does his gaze dart around so anxiously as he tells you how to find his mansion in the Eastern District? Ugh. I don't think I want to go. You're creepy. Do I do one of those, or do I continue? Let's continue. The mirrored city gleams invitingly. You'll get used to the smell in time. You walk galleried courtyards wreathed with vines and fungal blooms. Long straight roadways crisscross the length and breadth of Varchus, the stones worn by the wheels of carts and the tread of thousands of slippered feet. Lamplighters constantly check the fuel levels of the sconces and replace wicks. Firekeepers check the coiled spring mechanisms that control the angle of the mirrors. There's much to explore. Where will you go next? Well, I'm definitely not going to the mansion of the jewel-turbaned youth, because he's creepy. Pilgrimage. I need the dour-faced nurse's approval. The respect of the guard. Hmm. The bunch of things I need. Let's take a look at the hospital. The hospital lies in the shadow of the southern tower. Are you feeling a little fevered? Do you hope to learn medical secrets? Or perhaps you just enjoy the moans and flushed faces of the sick and suffering? Oh my god, there's so much to this place. Hmm. 
The charitable hospital is a long, galleried building divided into a series of curtained wards with their own light sources and mirror series. A dour-faced nurse glances at you expectantly. Which ward, are, which ward are you here to visit? Uh. The mirrorless room. The ward is locked several times over, and the dour-faced nurse looks uncomfortable when you mention it. Hmm. Intriguing. Oh, off the services of the brisk campaigner. You've won her trust? She's prepared to come ashore. Is that, like, permanently? Or just for now? Hmm. I mean, I don't need her. If she'd be more comfortable ashore, that wouldn't be a bad thing, but I'd like to help her. Yeah, I don't want to just leave her here. But then again, if her heart does explode into flame or something because her soul is <laughs> finished burning, uh, that could be dangerous? I don't know. Is it like a small nuclear explosion? Has anybody measured the explosive power of a person's burning soul? Let's go visit the fungal infections ward. They keep it cool and closed off. The doctors and nurses all wear masks when they enter. How bad could a fungal infection be? The dour-faced nurse ties a mask around your face before leading you into the ward, which is set over two floors. The first thing you notice are the patient's constant racking coughs. We give them syrups and remedies, the nurse tells you, but lung bloom is a chronic condition. Coughing is the only symptoms in the milder cases, but as you walk further, as you walk further in, you begin to see hands and feet covered in mold, and then chests budding with little mushroom cups, and lichen, and even a young girl with a fringed red-orange fungal flower blooming in place of an eye. Ugh. It's the fungus harvester's disease, the dour-faced nurse tells you sadly, pulling you away. It only gets worse in the heat and light, but what can we do? Oh yeah, fungus would grow rampant here, wouldn't it, because of all of the light, and all the heat. Especially the heat. Gained one tear. Yeah, that'd scare me. Um. Let's go back. There's so much to do. Let's visit the temple. Do -do -do. It lies in the sacred district at the center of Varches. The sound of the bells grows louder and more reverberant as you approach. The temple tower pierces through the city's heart, taller than the other four towers which stand at each of the cardinal points. Around the temple sprawls the sacred district, vine-covered stone shrines, still ponds glowing with algae, and flash-finned carp. Priests in white, their wrists heavy with metal chains. There are no mirrors in the Temple of Myher, the rest of the city has to make do with mirrored light and reflection, but Meyer's most sacred space is filled with hundreds of lamps and lit candles of hard-packed phosphorescent fungus. There's so much to do here, this is insane. Hmm. 44% chance. Not bad. Not good, either. This one requires a dream of smoke. Scintillac. Hmm. A lump of blue Scintillac. Sounds even rarer. Oh, this one involves a lamentable relic. Yeah, I wouldn't mind tossing one of those in. That's really the only reason I'm holding on to them, is just for, like, story events. Alright, the Shrine of Myher. His stone-carved form is rubbed daily with glowing moss. Perhaps it is guilt, which makes you think of placing a lamentable relic amongst the flowers and other offerings. 
one of the sun seers sucks her breath in sharply and glares at your offering as though it was an abomination. But she makes no move to knock it away. We do not eat the flesh of living beings, she hisses angrily. We do not murder or maim. We follow Myher's tenets of purity and light. She touches you abruptly on the forehead, her fingers hot like a brand. May Myher forgive you for your sins, as unforgivable as they seem to me. Wait, what do you mean, sin? I gained fragments. <laughs> Doesn't seem like anything bad happened. It's fine. Don't worry. Okay, I think I can do one more thing. Let's go back and do something else. Um, wait, what? I went all the way back? Okay, let's enter again, I guess. That was weird. Hmm. The Fungus Carter. Her cart is piled high with fungal blooms and jars of algae, painstakingly scraped from the surfaces of walls. She stops every few minutes to cough surreptitiously into her dyed cotton scarf, and eyes you warily when you approach. I have to take this load all the way to the Sacred District, and the priests don't like it if I'm late. You inquire politely about her cough, and she looks suddenly terrified. Meyer looked down on me, she mumbles. Please don't say anything. I have a family to feed. With that, she grabs the handles of the cart and pulls away at a run. Within a few moments, you have lost sight of her in a crowded... in the crowded pathways. What an odd woman. So she's suffering from the sickness. God, what a terrible job that'd be. Harvesting fungus knowing that you're basically killing yourself by doing so. It's like being a coal miner with, like, no safety, no masks, or anything like that. Just working in incredibly dirty conditions and ruining your lungs in the process. Okay, so now it's... The, the uh, bills have nilled many times. So, at evening, after the fifth bell... Each Tomas is assigned a room. Time to sleep, I guess. The light is endless and merciless. Will you sleep? Uh, oh wait, I, I don't want to dream. I hope I don't dream. All visitors in Varchus are given one night's accommodation in the city's only inn. It is a handsome stone mansion, arranged around a pleasantly cool courtyard. Frescoes of city life are painted on the walls. Given how few visitors Varchus hosts, you suspect the inn is more usually used by philandering locals. Evening falls, or does it? The town's five principal mirrors are mounted on coiled spring mechanisms, and alter their angles subtly to create the impression of evening. Across the city, the fire, keepers, the fire keepers throw pinches of colored powder into the lamps, and the quality of, the, of light yellows to a softer brightness. Hmm. Low risk to go into the kitchens. Straightforward challenge, 100%. That's good. <laughs> sleep. Let's not sleep. I don't want to dream. Hmm. Well, let's do other stuff first and worry about that later. Let's do the courtyard, because I have a 100% chance of passing that. Yeah, I mean, I suppose having a high mirror skill is probably the best thing for this place, right? Because this place is all about mirrors and light. It's perfect. Cushions are arrayed around the marble fountain in the middle. Musicians pluck their instruments under the shade of the twisted yellow-leafed trees. Their songs are curiously prosaic, the lyrics more like a biographical report than a poetic invention. You listen to a lake dredger's waterlogged, lotus-rooted dirge. You sway to the slow, steady ballad of the fungus collectors, and join in the lamplighter's quick-footed dance, which mimics their evening rounds. The evening finishes with the Song of Meyer, which is sung to the accompaniment of stringed instruments and drums, and polished glass prisms which split the white light into rainbows in counterpoint to the notes. 
Lost to Tear. Three more memories of Distant Shores. Nice. <laughs> okay. Now I need to either sleep or don't. 49%. I'll take my chances. Did I succeed? I failed. It won't be difficult to stay awake in this constant light, but the lack of rest will take its toll. You watch the light scintillate, or scintillate? I think it's scintillate. Scintillate across the inn's wall. You pinch the delicate skin of the insides of your elbows and pace the length of the room. Did the mirrors by your bedside just give you a roguish sort of glint? Are you going out of your Z-faring mind? You decide, very deliberately, not to look. Gained two tear. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, two tear. No big deal. Dawn in Varchus. Outsider time in Varchus is strictly rationed. Each morning at dawn, the guard visits the inn to eject any Tomas they find. They are polite, but very definite. Fair enough. Return, the guard tells you, but not yet. With that, they usher you into the darkness beyond the walls. You blink, mirror dazzles from your eyes. It's cold out here. What a strange place. I can try to go back inside, but no, they're not going to let me in. No way. And no shop. Yeah, there, there is a massive amount of story events that you can get up to in there. That much is obvious. This place is extremely dense. Let's keep going east. I should have bought more supplies. Oh, shit. Oh my god, that ha Oh fuck, they have so many hit points. Get me the hell out of here. It's just a bunch of bats, but they had like 460 hit points, I think. What in the fuck? What kind of bats are those? Jesus. Let's head north. There's something under the water. I'm turning off my lights just in case. No, it's, it's turning around. We're good. Yeah, so let's head up to Godfall and go through the darkness while doing so. I'm doing that as a joke, but it actually does attract enemies, so that's very stupid. Don't do that. Ooh, Fathom King's Hold! Hello, so it was... Is it either the south or the middle of the Untersee? This is kind of... It's kind of both. I mean, it's southeast. Anyway, yeah, so I need to go there. Perfect. That's where I need to go to continue the main quest line, my father's bones. Beautiful. I don't even know what these are. Look at how colorful that is up there, up north. Are these mushrooms? Fungus? I don't even know, but they're gorgeous. Whoa. 
The fuck is this? Why did stuff just change? I'm scared. Okay. But why? Huh. Everything's fine, right? Lorkin's Port, named for that most enterprising of drownies. Phosphor cells burn green. Somewhere below, the king waits. Like an iceberg, like a bizarre master's scheme, like the Neath itself, most of the hold is invisible. You see only a tiny portion of sculpted coral. The rest waits below the surface. The Fathom King's bone rooms and aquaria, his pearl snares and his dining chambers. Hmm. <gasps> trade for drowning pearls. I really need drowning pearl drowning pearls to get access to the trade system in Kanate. Or in Kanate. Kanate's not a place, but to get access to the Kanate trade system. The Nefridi Quarter. I really need drowning pearls. Looks like I need Sintelac, yeah. Seven Sintelac? That, oh my god, that's insane. At the moment, the only way I know of to get Syntelac is to do the story event that requires, uh, requires uh, something away to import. The one that only has like a 60% chance of success. And that only gets you one Syntelac, so unless I can find a better supply line, this is not going to happen. Hmm. Let's get a port report. Those granted audience return dazed, awestruck. The king is not generous, but occasionally he is fair. Is there a shop in this place? No. Hmm. I guess get an audience? Takes a Z story, thank god I have one left. Been burning through them lately. I guess we'll do this. The Fathom King is the Lord of the Drownies, those dead who won't stop swimming. By some accounts, he's the Lord of all who die at sea. Bring him a story to tickle his curiosity. I like that. Those dead who won't stop swimming. The porter has the skin of a shark. She has a drowned woman's eyes. It is not permitted to look at her hands. Yes, she rasps. That story is sufficient. She opens the valves of pearl and permits you to pass into the conduit. Hello. This is the salt-blown heart of the hold. The Fathom King floats in his throne, a gem-starred bowl of sea stone, the size of a banqueting table. He's wearing a dressing gown of purple... Broussade? Brocade? Soaked to dark with salt water. He leans his chin calmly on his hand. Beneath the surface of the water in his throne, his hidden region pulse... Wait, his hidden regions pulse constantly, insistently. Hmm. I have come to plead for a sailor's life. This is an expensive way to gain crew. Witness an execution? Uh, no thanks. Hmm. Well, I've given him a tail. So, presumably he might feel like he owes me something? So let's not go doing frivolous things. Let's do my father's bones first. Your complexity. I have a more personal petition. You know something of my father, of what remains of him. Oh yeah! I guess if he is the king of all those who are dead, he would know about my father's bones, wouldn't he? His complexity is watching you. His eyes are cold as polished stones, but a smile lurks at the corners of his mouth, like an eel in ambush. Hmm. All this for the name of a mask, what? Hmm. 
Wait, what's the difference between these two? It's a high price, what? So this is only unlockable when my past is a natural philosopher. Hmm. Interesting. So it sounds like I can either offer to do something for him or just simply ask for his assistance. Hmm. I don't want to assume that he's going to be generous. In fact, it even specifically told me the king is not generous. So I'm thinking I should offer something more than just the tail that I gave him. I'm guessing the tail is basically just payment to see him, not really for anything else. Let's go with this, I guess. There's more here than you know. A visage is a nexus of competing powers. The masters, the snuffers, and now the widow. I will help you unpick the web. Oh yes. But I will move carefully. He leans back. Besides, I don't get nearly enough fruit down here. You can review the Fathom King's requests in the Curiosities sections of your... Gazetteer. Okay, so he wants a bunch of... stuff. Wait, I can still ask for assistance? Okay. Your complexity. There is a question only you can answer. To open the final gate of my journey to my father's bones, I ask this boon of you. You are fortunate, the Fathom King announces. I have only a few small requests. Fulfill them, and I shall tell you what you need to know. Bring me the heart of a legend. Bring me a light from the sky. Bring me a willing guest to stay with me forever. Witness the end of the eldest amongst its kind. Bring me word. Bring me the fruit of an eternal tree. And bring me something scientific, modern, cutting edge, I believe is the term. My bride enjoys that sort of thing. He sits back, under regions pulsing with expectation. You seem quite capable, he adds carelessly. I'm sure it's not too much trouble. Ugh. Yeah, no big deal. You just want a willing guest and an account of an elder's kind, the fruit of an eternal tree, the skylight, a legend's heart, and a miracle of science. <laughs> no big deal. <gasps> Ooh, I can present my memento mori. That's the miracle of engineering. Oh my god. That's I need to give him something of that caliber. Hell no, I'm not going to present the memento mori. At least not yet. Jeez. That would make my ship way less effective at combat. So what about this? Like, I... I don't understand the difference between these two. Like, that doesn't seem to do anything. Alright, let's speak of other matters. That's done, that's done. Okay. Ask a boon of the king or witness an execution. Hmm... I'm guessing witnessing an execution would probably give me a tale of terror. So let's not do that. Let's ask a boon of the king, I suppose. You have brought the king a story gift. You may ask a gift in return. It's impossible to know what you'll receive. Sea coal. Black fire, the king intones, risen from the sea. Remember me with its vapors. He smiles directly into your eyes. The audience is over. You return to the surface. Hunched, plated, scuttling slaves haul baskets of wet coal behind you. Five fuel. Thank you. It's pretty good. <laughs> Permit your leave. No, if I let my sailors off, I think they're all going to, like... I, bad stuff is going to happen. Like, they're going to get lost, they're going to get split up, and they're going to get eaten by, like, a bunch of Cthulhus. It's just going to be a whole thing. I'm not going to do it. Nope. I'm going. Alright, hold on. Let me let me check my thing. My gazetteer. Or whatever.
Let's see. The heart of one of the great monsters. Mount Nomad or the Tree of Ages? Wait, you want me to, what, like, dig up the Tree of Ages or something? Are you fucking insane? Man, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this stuff for a long time. This is insane. Yeah, that is really not gonna happen for a very long time. I hope when I go to do this, this is near the end of the quest and therefore near the end of the game, because after I do all this stuff, I feel like I'm gonna be sucked dry. Like, my memento more is probably gonna be gone. I'll lose an officer. I'm probably gonna be poor, and after stealing the eternal tree and all that stuff, everybody's probably gonna hate me. I'll probably be cursed to high heaven. All the gods will hate me. Alright, where should we go next? Let's head up to Khan's Shadow and then end the episode there. Because I need supplies. So I kind of need to start heading over towards Aestaville. Oh, wait a minute. Swallowing Isles. Never mind, let's end the episode at Swallowing Isles. Assuming there's actually somewhere to dock. Is there? Oh, there isn't. Never mind. Up to Con Shadow it is then. Wait, Melting Isles? It's pretty close. That also might not be somewhere to dock. Um, I'm not going to risk it, because I'm actually pretty low on supply, so I'm going to go to Con Shadow, and I'll probably check out Melting Isles soon. What is this place? Oh wait, this is a new place. What is this? Oh, the Mangrove College! This is... I, I thought it was that, um, visage that I needed to go for to find the Mangrove College, but... This is where I need to get the person to bring to Venderbite. Yeah. Ah, no shop. That's fine. Let's see. Oh my god. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff to do here. Um. Okay. I will do that next episode. I know if I start doing that, it's going to turn into like a whole 20-30 minute thing and it's going to be awesome, but I better just cut it short before it becomes too long. I've learned my lesson. Kind of. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I will check out Mangrove College.